I got this knowledge of this water bottle. Ten days later, this water bottle gets broken. I have thrown it away. Do I see it again now? Now I have no knowledge of this because it is not there. Or she takes it away after half an hour. Swamiji, I will keep it filled up. She has taken away. So it is not there. So my knowledge becomes condensed. This entire world you are seeing now, when you are asleep, do you see any of this world? You are not even seeing your body. So the knowledge of your body, the knowledge of the world, it got condensed. It is not continuous. If it was the truth, the world was the truth, even during sleep that you should continue to see the world, the world cannot disappear. Trikaleshu abhaditam vattu satyam itvichate. What is truth and reality? Reality is that which always reminds, it should remain in the past. 20,000 years back, 20 millions of years back should have remained. It should remain 20 millions of years later also. It should remain now also. So that is called the uh, Khandita Bodha. But when runs the Lord, when runs you begin to realize him, God is always there at all times. He never disappears for even one moment. He is always there. So he is called the consciousness which always remains. It is not a disjointed consciousness. It is a continuous consciousness. So it is called the Akhanda Bodha. Ismillayam yadi Then finally, when the world disappears, when the jiva disappears, where does it go? It goes to that one truth. It has come out of it, it goes back in it. The, the main fundamental Bible for the philosophers. The Christians call this our Bible. So, what is the Bible for the philosophers, the Advaitins? The Bible of three, four, we have got three Bibles. <coughs> the first Bible is called the Upanishads, Vedas. And we normally confine ourselves to the ten principal Upanishads. There is that, Isha, Kena, Katha, Prashna, Mundaka, Mandukya, Aitreya, Taitriya, then Vedarindaka, um, Chandukya. So these ten, we normally confine ourselves to that. Then Gita is the most important because it summarizes the entire thing. It is called the Upanishad Sara. If the Upanishads are considered as cows, and Krishna is the one who is Dukhra, uh, he is milking the cows, and that milk, that is the Upanishad Sara, that is Gita. That is that. So, and the third one is, in the Upanishads, you find various versions. At one place it says, uh, from the Akasha Vayu came, from Vayu Agni came, from the Agni, from the fire, then water came, from the water this came, Akasha Vayu, Vayu Agni, Agrapaha, Adhya Prathivi, Prathivya, Otradeha, Otradi, Bhyavannam. So like that it is given. In some other Upanishad, two or three things in between are left, suddenly he says, from the Akasha, the water came. So, and there are so many contradictions like it looks. One operation says, this is the method by which you can reach God. Another operation says, this is the method by which you can reach God. Then which is the method? Is this right or is this right? So, the samanvaya or harmonizing the various contradictory statements of all the operations and telling what is the ultimate meaning of Vedanta, that is given in Brahma Sutra. As Brahma Sutra is given in formula, in very short sentences, people were unable to understand. So in those days, great people like Shankara themselves, they explained it to all. And then what they explained was written also, that is called the Bhashya. So he wrote the Bhashya on it, a detailed commentary. At that time, people were intelligent, they could understand it. As time went on, the Bhasha itself, even though it's supposed to be the simplest, it was beyond us. What it means, we didn't understand because we are not spiritually oriented, we are not fully worldly. Suddenly, if he says certain things, 
Vasana, this thing, Prarabdha, we don't understand the difference. We say everything is Prarabdha. Today, uh, you went to see somebody, oh, it is a Prarabdha, today I went to see him, that man bore me for three hours. It is not Prarabdha. Prarabdha is only some accident, incident which happened. This is not Prarabdha. This is out of your free will you went. There is that. So, people are unable to distinguish and all that. So, for the Bhashya, for the commentary, some people wrote for their commentaries. Now, Bhavati by Vachaspati Mishra was written like that. And those people were so devoted, I tell you, they could understand the meaning because they never thought of anything. Vachaspati Mishra was married. When he was married, he had already started writing the Bhashya for Shankaras. Thirty-five years, he, was, he went on writing. He never knew what happened in between. He might have gone to the bathroom and come back, excepting for that he never did anything. He <coughs> went on writing. Thirty-four years after the marriage, he never saw his wife for one hour. Marriage is over, he came and sat in his room, he began to write. So his wife was serving him food even while he was writing. He didn't know anything at all. One night what happened? There was a gust of wind. The hurricane light went off. Then immediately, she took a mattress and put it. Then she saw her hand when the light came and hand was heavy, it was a lady's hand, there was sari and there were some uh, bangles were there. She asked, at this time of the night, who are you has come to my putya? Very angrily he asked, she says, Bhagavan, I am your wife for the last 35 years when you have been writing. And he was about to finish it. Barely another one page was left. Then he feels sorry. All your youth has spoiled. I have never been with you for one minute. I was writing this book, the Mahashyaman Shankara's part. I have not kept a name. For every commentary they keep a name. Tattu Vechani Vyakya. Like that. Or uh, Ananda Karani Vyakya. Like that they will put a name. So this Vyakya will be known by your name. Even though I spoil your life, for years to come, people will know your name will be there. Bhavati is called that one. That's how we did it. Mm-hmm. So that is why they were able to understand. If uh, morning I am doing this and then noon I am doing this and every day sitting for half an hour, in that half an hour, twenty times my cell phone rings and ten times my land phone rings and then my wife comes and asks me questions, my son and comes and asks me, you see, can I do this homework, can you help me in this homework? And then I do it, how much concentration you have. And with all the weeping, we have written the best book in the world. <laughs> That's not the thing. When you write it, your mind should be there, you should become one, and he writes, you don't write. So that should be there. So, Esmil Layam Yati Purutra So finally, so in these things, all these things have been explained. So the Brahman creates, has created through the effect of Mahar Prakriti, he has created the entire world and the entire world disappears there. Now, you get up in the morning, then you play in this waking step, you play in your dream as a dream and all that, then finally during your sleep the entire thing goes back. Where has it gone back? Into you. The jiva created it, the jiva sustained it for one hour of dream and the jiva gobbled it and the entire world, the sapna world, the waking world, all has gone into the jiva only. So all these three states or all these shariras are all contained back into the jiva. So it is the jiva which created this entire world in this fantasy of imagination and it is that which has dissolved it completely. Yasmin Layam Yati Purutrecha, the one in which all the three states finally get dissolved. So today we'll stop with this. Yetasma Jayate Pranaha, Manasarvindriyanicha, Kamvayur Jyoti Rapascha, the three Vishwas Sadharini. The moment when that Aham came, immediately you thought of your office room where for the last two days you didn't have any fan, the fan didn't work. You asked for the mechanic, mechanic has not come. So immediately you remember the Vayu. So the Vayu has come out 
only when the aham came from you that fan came the why you came then the moment you got up you remembered but when you remembered i simultaneously the prana was other who is to remember how can you remember when there is no prana inside you so immediately the prana also came the moment the aham came the prana also came so from the jiva the prana came etasmat jayate prana then immediately you began to think you think of your office think that at 10:30 my chacha ji is to come so all thoughts come from the mind so the mind has started first only you were there that aham then immediately the prana came immediately the mind came they were all simultaneous it is not that after half an hour the other thing came immediately they come manaha the mind came so the mind it is the one which sits in each chair it sits in the chair here then it is able to see it sits in the chair here it is able to hear there is nothing called the separately uh, uh, an eye ear here it is the mind which converts itself into the shakti of seeing into the shakti of hearing so it goes and sits in the each chair otherwise i am sitting here will you come and sit after 10 minutes we ask may ji when did you come that means your mind was not there so your eyes were looking at you so still it is not there so it is the mind similarly when a person dies the eyes are still there the ears are still there then why didn't he hear why didn't he see because that energy which was there as a prana has all gone which was only a part of consciousness so prana mana all the senses they all came out of it then the body came out of it when you said aham then you saw your body so the body is made of all the five the elements. five bhutas pancha bhutas the five elements so they also came first the akasha came kham akasha vayu so from the akasha came vayu from the vayu came the fire from the fire came the water how all these things can come supposing i am running 100 meters race so in the akasha i am running then what happens when you are running you find the wind blowing against you when you are running you yourself make a disturbance in this and then it becomes a vayu so akasha vayu the vayu came then when you go further you find the heat inside when you are running running and running you find terrifically hot inside so agni came vayu agni then still when you run out of that heat pasina pasina jaate the sweating comes so water has come out of that so this is how the process that how it does jyoti rapasthe then if you still run all the dust comes and falls on you there is a tree <laughs> so all these things come <laughs> so the prithvi has come because of the pasina yeah pasina hunger if it does not become wet with that sweat then this won't come and remain here so all these things have come on you at the same time and this prithvi is what sort of a prithvi prithvi vishwasadharini this is the substratum for the entire universe the universe is there because of the prithvi devi prithvi dvaya dhritam devi so by you only you are only the uh, the one who is bearing all who is the local substratum for us all so Of this, uh, yeah. So this is what Lao Tzu says in the um, the Tao Te Ching: everything is mind created and mind governed. Yes, yes, exactly. So. There's a mind which comes from which all it creates it, and then it governs it. Yes, the mind cannot work if there is no prana. Supposing there is a corpse, <coughs> the prana is gone. Does the mind work? No, the mind doesn't work. So first the prana comes. first the idea of aham comes so when all the idea of aham comes aham comes because of the mind only but the prana also comes otherwise the mind will not work so the mind and the prana come together at the same time that's what happens so and again we're sure of a krishna says it comes to this everything is the mind therefore turning the mind to god is the only way <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,
it is the jivatma which has been playing in all the three states the waking state the dreaming state and the sleeping state pratraye kriti tetsa jiva he is playing in all the three and he plays in a playground which has been manufactured by him which has been produced by him so he is the one who created this entire world and in each individual he is playing as the person who is attached to the waking body the point is during the waking state you are attached to your body you say this is my body then the dream state i may be born as anything i may be born as a, a beggar or as a king then again i am attached to that body so there is one chap here who is attached to the waking body there is one chap here who is attached to his uh, dream body there is another one who is attached to the sleep without the body the disembodied state all the three are the same it is the same one who comes in each and gets attached to the various one so that is the jiva we have see what happens is uh, in our prakriya especially vidyaranya has created a little small complication in sense when the entire electricity comes in the bulb at the stage in which it has come it is still pure she calls it the kutastha kutastha means the one who is inside pratyagatma the one who is there at the Side. Then, when once it gets mixed up with the body and it thinks I am with the body, that is when that gets mixed up with Maya, and then considers the body and the world as his uh, uh, objects of enjoyment, then he is called a Jiva. So Jiva is one who considers himself as one with a body and one who is subject to birth and death. while the kutast atma so the atma itself he divided to three one is the the one who is there ultimately that is the brahman then another one is the kutast who is there secretly inside that is the one who came and came into each individual bulb then he calls <coughs> the third one as the jiva there is a difference there to me and now what is the jiva aadharam it is the base from which all the world has come when the i came it is the i which created the world and the body there is only the sense of early morning when you got up you were not aware of the body you were not aware of your mind just the idea came i when the i came immediately you said i shantananda the name came and not only your name came immediately you saw a blot on the wall the wall came the blot came and immediately the emotion came who has spoiled my wall so the entire world comes within a few minutes so it is the aadhara it is the substratum it is the base jiva is the base aham is the base out of which the world has come you know why it is called aham kalaji have you got any idea no you see a is the first letter of the alphabet Ha okay, is the last letter of the alphabet. So all the objects of the world come with an A and Ha. Ah, yes. You call it pot, you call it anything, you call it table. Everything comes with an A and Ha. So that which contains the entire world, yes. which can be expressed within the two alphabets A and Ha, that is called the A. I I read somewhere, but I forgot it. <laughs> That's why it is called A. That is contained in the world. It's unreal. Eh? Therefore, it's unreal. It should be. A is the first alphabet. A is the last alphabet. You know, in Sanskrit they play with words like that. This is the adhara or the substratum or the foundation or the base or the support for everything. Then what else it is? It is ananda. Ananda. Ananda means the ultimate bliss. Ananda has got no opposite word. Joy's opposite word is sorrow. 
heat, the opposite word is cold. Ananda is something which is not this material joy which you have ever seen, it is something else. That is why they gave a word called Ananda. They couldn't express it fully. A ah means from all sides, from everywhere. Nand means happiness. So that which gives you happiness from all sides, from everywhere. So that they call it as Ananda. That's how Nandati means the one who is dancing with joy. So A ah, from all, from everywhere, from all sides. So Ananda means the bliss. What is bliss? Nobody knows. One knows pretty well that there is no sorrow at all in that. But it is not something which is negative saying it is not sorrow. It is something which is positive. But it is a feeling which you cannot express. Somebody says, I am feeling thirsty. You describe what is thirsty, tell me, you can't say. So these emotions cannot be described. So in the same way, Ananda cannot be described. And Ananda is the nature of the ultimate Lord. We call it the nature. We say he has no attributes, but this is nature. What is the difference between attribute and nature? Attribute is something which has been cultivated either in this birth or in the past birth. It is not an inherent part of your nature. It is not an inherent part of your nature that is there. Now, say a bitter gourd is brought. So in the bitter gourd, there could be a bitter gourd somewhere that has got different color. Now we have got certain vegetables which have got several colors also. Now brinjal, there is a white brinjal, there is a red brinjal. <coughs> so this whiteness and uh, other things are external. White looks white. White looks red because that's the only color which is unable to absorb out of the sun's rays. So it is not part of the thing, it is not born with that color in that sense. <coughs> it is something external to it. But the bitterness of the bitter gold, it is part of it, it is born with it, it is inherent in it. So that you call it as nature, while the color you call it as external upadhi. Upadhi is an important term in in this, which is used for everything, upadhi rahitaha ishwara, upadhi sagitaha, upahitaha jivaha. So all these things are there. Upadhi means these external objects. What are the external objects of a jivatma? I am short-lived. I am going to have a I have got a body. My body lives up to a certain year. My body has got so many diseases, may come up at any time. So all these things are all external upadhis, the Atma doesn't have any of these things. And still it says, I am old, I am young, I have studied up to MSc. So this MSc, age, everything is called the external adjunct or upadhi. So Ishwara, he has also got Maya with him, but he doesn't have any of these external adjuncts which have been created by Maya and dumped on him. While we are all burdened with Upadhis, from birth we think that Shantaranda means who is five feet, six inches in height, who has got a body. So we consider him only with all the Upadhis only because nobody knows who is Shantaranda. We only know through this external varna, the external description only. There is a Adharam Anandam, then Akanda Bodham. How else you can express that what he is? He is Akanda Bodha. Why is called Adhara, you know? Supposing you bring ghee in a small vessel, you throw away the vessel, uh, how will you carry it? So the other thing also will fall down. So without it, it cannot be sustained. That is called the Adhara. And without consciousness there cannot be a jiva, you cannot move, you cannot laugh, you cannot have emotions, you cannot feel hunger, you cannot feel anything. So consciousness is that which shows that I am 
and only when you are conscious of it, then you react to anything outside, you react to sorrows, you react to pain, you react to the beating by somebody else, all reactions come. Now, externally, this doesn't have an external consciousness. I beat it, it cannot react. It cannot be angry with me. It cannot beat me back. So, we call it insentient, that is jada. So, it is the consciousness which is in everywhere, which is making us sustain it, sustains us, and that is why it is called adhara. Now, the third word is akanda bodham. Well, everybody has got consciousness. What is the difference between Brahman and me? My consciousness, it comes and goes. It comes and goes. Now the external consciousness, now I am seeing Sony here. And after three hours, it is not there. I am not able to see it. So if it is a true thing, your true thing cannot disappear. Whether it is in America or anywhere, it should be seen by me. And it should be seen whether I am sleeping or at all times. That which exists in all the three states, Trikaleshu, Abhaditam Vastu, that is called the truth, that which reminds in all. I don't know whether you are aware of the story of Janaka. What is truth? Janaka, the great king, the philosopher king, after his lunch, he was lounging in his court along with his wife. And the chief wife called Sunayana was messaging his feet and another wife she was taking this hand fan because there is no electricity and she was fanning him. Suddenly he sees a vision. He is not yet asleep. While conscious, he is having a vision. In the vision, he finds that suddenly his commander in chief, the army, comes along with a few people in an agitated condition. Sir, the enemies have come inside our harem. They have not only taken over the city, they have come. They are coming and they are going to catch you and you will be you will be slain. So come on, there is a secret door here, you get out. So he is getting up and he is not bothered about his wife and all, he wants to save himself. He is about to run. By that time the enemy says, come, they catch him. Put chains, they drag him towards their king. The king said, Janaka, your name we have been hearing for a long time. You have been a good king, you have been a good man. So I don't want to kill you, otherwise all my enemies I kill. I am giving you up to 9, 12 o'clock. You will begin to run, otherwise you cannot reach. You will go outside the limits of this kingdom before 9, 12 o'clock. Wherever you are found after, I have given instructions everywhere, the soldiers will shoot at you. You won't be alive, you will be killed that very moment. Go beyond our district, then nobody will harm you. Get out. And in a panic he begins to run and nobody comes out. He is uh, feeling thirsty, he is feeling weak because the king has already announced if anybody comes out of his house, sees him or does anything, he gives him even a cup of water, he will be killed on the spot. The soldiers will be watching from somewhere, from the watchtower. So nobody dares to come out. He runs, runs, runs at last at night, 12 o'clock exact, he crosses the line. He comes to somebody else's territory and there at the border, as soon as he crossed, he found a big charity house called in Dharamshala. So in the charity house, the owner is sleeping outside a court, the manager. He goes, shakes him up. He says, look here, who you are, you are. Look here, I want badly some food and some water. I am Janaka, the king. I have been driven out of my kingdom. And please, for heaven's sake, take mazi. Give me some food, something to eat. The manager looks at him. Sorry, I got nothing. Yesterday we had a big bandara at night. So many people took. Everything is over. So I have nothing to give you. Everything is raw, raw rice is there, you can't eat it. So, what I suggest is perhaps underneath those tabs we have put all the results. 
so that in the morning only the people will come and wash it. If it if it is not wet, it will be difficult to wash them in the morning. So the water is there in them all. All these things are filled. That is the rice pot. So you go and put your hand and perhaps some rice might have been sticking on the sides which due to the water would have come there, you might be able to get some handfuls. He goes and with his hands he takes out a big handful of it. Ah, oh, he is so happy. He is taking them almost very near to the mouth but there is many a slip. Just then two black dogs from nowhere, they jump. They just, in that hurry, all the rice is spilt over the floor. And it's all full of mud. The king weeps, O oh Lord, have you to submit me to this torture after having been a king? Should I be submit to this torture? Suddenly, the vision disappeared. <coughs> he find his wife by his side, fanning him. He asked one question, is this true or is that true? People can't understand what do you mean by this or that? Who knows what was through his mind? Who knows what visions we had? He had. He was not prepared to tell. He simply asked, people said he has become a man or what? He says, call my ministers. So the ministers came, but secretly they called the doctors also. The doctor said he's perfectly okay. Then he asked the ministers, come on, everywhere, ask the drummer to drum and tell the people, whoever answers this question of mine, he'll be given heavily, he'll be compensated, I'll give him some uh, one lakh dollars. Then they announce everywhere, then he starts his usual routine life. So many people come, somebody comes and says, sir, that is true. He says, what do you mean by that is true? Which is that? You know, he just took a chance. Then another chap says, this is true. What do you mean by this? He doesn't know. So he put them all, he said, guy, you fellows, you want to give me? Then at the the one with eight deformities in his body, one of the top with others, he walks in. He's a really soul. He says, Janaka, neither that is true nor this is true. You know why? Tell me, are you feeling hungry now? No, just now I had my breakfast. Are you feeling thirsty now? No. Are you feeling that palpitation and the panic with which you ran at that time, it just crossed? Are you having it now? No. When you are there, when you are about to take the handful of rice, at that time, did you see your wife standing by your side and fanning you? No. Was it so, what you saw then is not available now. What you see now was not available then. So, that which is today available and not tomorrow or yesterday cannot be that true. What was there either yesterday or tomorrow but what is not present today cannot be true. What is present today but not tomorrow cannot be true. So, the world which you see now in the waking state but which is not coming before you in the sleeping state cannot be true. Because what is truth has been defined as Trikaleshu Abhaditam. Trikaleshu in the three times, the past, present and future. Abhaditam, that which has not been sublated. Sublated is a philosophical term. That which is not cancelled with the uh, with the original effect. From the original period. That is, uh, what do you call it? From the retrospective effect. You see a serpent. So you go and bring a torch and then you find it's only a rope. Now this serpent, it has not gone just now. It was never there at all. Even when you saw it as a serpent 15 minutes back, it was not there. So this vision has gone away with a retrospective effect. So that is called the sublation in philosophy. So what's happening? mechanical, everything is something to be obtained, remove it, it comes. So we are so mechanical, we forget the fact, this entire which is full of so much of love and emotions and all this, this forms part of the Brahman, otherwise Brahman could never have created them. No, it what is part of it. What remains under illusion? In the uh, name of love, he has Raja. Right. 
But then, then rather, but then use this you have to come to a higher degree of law. That is ah, that is that is the very important thing. You know, just in the name of Vaira here, yes. people deprive them. So it's so you you remind like a girl of another religion, yeah. and in the name of love, yes. a great mother and great divine and great master and this and See, look they here. are only expressing their ego, not the exactly. Ego. That's what happens. If you never had a love towards your guru, that love is only called devotion. Uh -huh. So if you had no love for guru, you live with your thousand years, you will get nothing. Uh -huh. It is that love which makes it come. It is not the consciousness which comes and goes, it is the ultimate truth. The ultimate truth happens to be a continuous consciousness, a never ceasing consciousness that is called the Akhanda Bhutha. A consciousness which doesn't have a switch, so it has always been on, so you cannot put it off. And that is the Akhanda Bhutha. So the one with unbroken, continuous consciousness. And Yasmin Lambya Ati Puratrayancha. So it is the Aham, it is the final Aham, that is the great eye, the self, from which only the entire world came out, including the Jiva. And the entire world, including the Jiva, will go back and dissolve. Yasmin Layam Yati. The one in which gets dissolved all the three states and all the three sharīras, that is called. The three sharīras, they get ultimately there. If you take the individual, all the three states, all the three sharīras, they all go back. That is why, who is Brahma? Give me some indication. Yes, you said that I can get only through meditation. I shall do it. But please give me some indication when the Brahman comes, I'll be able to recognize him. Oh, this is Brahman. If somebody, if I say go and meet Swami Sarashwaranda, sir, there will be twenty, thirty Swamiji's. How will I know? Oh, you will find that he has got a white skin. He, is, uh, he doesn't have hair on his head. He wears this white glass. So you have to tell him something by which he can understand. So when that is asked in Taitri Upanishad, where Bhrigu asked, his father says, so, the one from which the entire world has come, the one who sustains this entire world during the entire dream, the one in which the entire dream gets dissolved along with this entire dream world and dream people. And that you know as Brahman. That is why. We are starting. Yetasma jayate pranaham manas sarvendriyani jayam khamvayu jyoti rapascha prithiv susadharini. Some of four days. Some of the previous one. Some of the previous one. Right. She is talking about who is this Jivatma. He is the very Paramatma himself. When the electricity of the generator comes inside the bulb, it is the same electricity, there is nothing less, but we this is jiva. Because when once it came to the light, it forgot its source, it is thinking this body is mine, I am this. So when it breaks, oh well it thinks that I am going to die now, but it never dies. It is the other man who says it is fused. It is not fused, the electricity is alive. It is only the bulb which is fused, but the electricity is alive. Similarly, when I see somebody die, I say he has died. But nobody will know that I have died, that feeling can never come because nobody dies. That electricity inside cannot die, the energy cannot die. So we will be knowing still that I am. That will never go. There is no time when a person will say, I am not. Man nahi ho, ye nahi ke sakta kabhi. Yetasma jayate pranaha mana sarvendriya niche kham vayur jyoti rapascha prithvi vishwasya dhari. Ab yehi jo jivatma jo aham jab agaya, 
اس اہم سے ہی ساری دنیا ہی جب اہم نہیں تھا جب رات کو جب آپ سو رہے تھے یہ جو من جو ہے وہی اہم ہے وہی جیواتما ہے جب من نہیں تھا تب آپ نہیں تھے کیول سو دیر ہیز ٹو دس باڈی ہیز ٹو گیٹ اپ اٹ ہیز ٹو رن اٹ ہیز ٹو اسپیک اٹ ہیز ٹو ایٹ اٹ ہیز ٹو ڈرنک سو فار آل دیز ایکٹیویٹیز اٹ ریکوائرڈ دا وائٹل بریتھ وچ از کال دا پرانا سو دا پرانا از دا شکتی of the total shakti which comes inside and makes our indriyas act. If there is no prana, this body becomes a corpse. Dekh lash bhaktiya. Even. Yetasma jayate prana ha. Isi me se prana jata hai. See, in other words, she is talking also of ye brahman jo hai, humare andar hi hai. Sare panchabhus se shreer banaya hua hai. اس میں کئی آورن ہیں پہلا جو ہے وین اے پرسن لائف دیٹ وین اے پرسن لائف ان اے کاما ہز ہینڈ ول ریمائن لائک دیٹ اٹ کینوٹ مو سو ایٹ دا اسٹیج یو کال دیٹ از گراس ہینڈ اٹ از اے ہینڈ بٹ از دا گراس شیپ آف اٹ از گراس بٹ دین وین دا ہینڈ بگنس ٹو مو آئی وانٹ ٹو کیچ ہولڈ آف دس دین It is being done by a particular energy. That energy is called the vital alarm or the vital breeze. That is called the prana. So, this prana represents the action, uh, the energy of action. The energy to do the action comes from prana. It is called the energy of action. But the hand will not rise even though the, the power is there. It won't unless I will. I say, yes, hand, please, go and uh, leave it. So that is called the Icha Shakti or the will power. So I will that now my hand has to go and catch on the feet. Then only it goes. So long as I don't give the command, even though the power is there, the hand will not lose that power, it will not move. So that is called the mind. The mind which wills, yes, you will go now and you will do it. So, It is this jiva, the, where from all this energy comes, the energy with which it is recording, the energy with which radio is singing, the energy with which you are seeing a TV cinema, the energy with which you are able to iron your clothes, istri, you are able to understand everything. Each one is different, one is heat, one is light, one is sound. But where from all these things are coming, that comes from the heat. whole electricity. Similarly here, all these things are coming out of this Jeevatma only. The Jeevatma is Paramatma. It is the ultimate God. It is the Parabrahman. Yetasma jayate pranaha. Yetasma isi se pranaha jayate. Pran ki utpati hoti hai. From this only, yetasma from this only, the vital breath comes. Then what comes? Then manaha. The mind comes. Then all the indriyas, the I, because what is an indriya? Indriya is actually the place where this thing works. It is the mind which sits in the eye, then you are able to see. If your mind is elsewhere, think of something else, even though a person is standing before you, you will not see. Similarly, some sound is going on. If I think of something else, I may not hear this sound. Only when that mind comes and sits in this chair here, then it's able to hear. So these are all, it's called Golak Kaitai Hindi. These are all only the place, the chairs where they sit, it is the mind. So out of the mind, the various Indriyas have come. Not only that originally it is told, when the Virat Purusha came, the Virat Purusha had no eyes, he had no ears, there was nothing. But inside, the willpower was there. The willpower said, let me see. Then the eyes, suddenly the slits came, the eyes came. Let me hear. Then the ears came. So all these Indriyas came out of his Icha. So he wanted, oh, I want to create the world, the world was created. But he said, let me see what I have created. So 
the eyes came, the ears came, the nose came, the tongue came. So all these things came out of it. Yetasma jayate prana manaha sarvendriya So all the various senses, they all came out of it. I have a question. Yes. Then is it correct to say even though the Brahma put breathe forth the prana and the life force is there, yes. it's our will that created the Maya. Exactly. It is the, it is the, see the life force itself is, uh, is actually part of that energy. See, just as the heat energy and the ground energy, they are sisters or brothers. But prana is not an energy of Maya. Maya is illusion. That's why I tell you they are sisters. Both came from the same. Both came from the same womb. So, the two sisters, the one didn't come out to the other. Both were parallel. They were parallel. Prana but and mind. Prana and mind. The prana and mind. The universe said, from prana the mind came. He says, from him came all these things. Yetasma, from that paramatma of the jivatma only, all these things came. Prana came, the mind came, all the indriyas came, and then come, come on akash. Kham has got two meanings. One is called indriyas or the senses, the other one in the space. Here he means all the five panchabhutas, the five uh, elements, they all came out of it. So he says, Kham is space, Vayu is the air, Jyoti is fire, Apaha, uh, water, then the last is Prithvi, the earth, because the earth is the base on which the world is based. So the local substratum is this. But what is the substratum of this substratum? Where does this Prithvi stand? After all, it is the big Golak, uh, the, uh, yes, uh, the entire earth is a thing which is just remaining in space and any time it can fall down and break. Why does it not? So this, which bears the entire world, this is again, it came out of the Jiva, the Paramatma, so he is bearing this entire gap. This entire gap is kept in.